Hi there, I'm Stephanie. And I know that you are collecting large amounts of complex data at tremendous rates. But if you don't have a plan to manage and analyze it, it's useless. In fact, here at NI, we know that the data that engineers are collecting, only five to 10% of it is actually analyzed, leaving a lot of untapped potential for the insights hidden within the data. And this is why NI offers DDM. It's an application software uh, designed for engineers to accelerate the post-processing of test and measurement data. It is optimized for large data sets and includes tools to aggregate and search for the data that you need to analyze. You can interact with it to really understand the insights that the data is trying to tell you, apply engineering specific analysis to transform the data, and share key insights using a powerful drag and drop report editor. So let me show you how to get started with DDM. Um, this is the environment, and you can see that it is broken out by functions over here on the side. So the navigator is where you uh, find the data that you need to analyze in the moment. You view and interact with your data, perform analysis, create reports, and of course, automate this entire process. Over here, we have the data portal, and this is important because this is where the data that you choose to work with is going to be housed so that we can manipulate it without changing the underlying original raw data file. Now, the first thing you need to know is that DDM is compatible with over 1,000 different file formats. And we can do this through a technology called data plugins. We have over 1,000 of them available for free on our website, and you can, of course, create your own or request some help from NI if you need to. The second key technology is the data finder, and this builds an index of all of the metadata or properties stored within your files or database. Now, it's important to note that it will only create an index of the uh, files that you specify. So only the areas that are included within the search area are going to be in the index. Everything else, your private files and your C drive, untouched by this technology. But once that index is built, we can go ahead and start to perform some queries. And so in this case, I have a set of data that was passed to me by the test engineers, and I'm going to run the analysis. I have a basic understanding of the structure, but you can see there's about, we'll call it about 30 files for analysis. And what I'm most interested in are the files or the test that failed. And I know that within each of these files is a property that will either have a pass or a fail status. So if I just type in fail, you can see that from that data set, there was about, we'll call it a few that just that failed. And so what I want to do is start to investigate this a little bit more. So I can select any of these files, drag it into the data portal, and start to look at it. And we can see that we have information at the, individual, at the file level. And so all of this is metadata available for me to search. At the individual test level, so you can see there was a lower and upper chamber, chamber test for this test, and then at the individual channel level. So um, instead of using a simple search, I'm going to create an advanced query, and I can do that simply by finding the properties that I want to search upon and putting it into this query. Um, we use wildcards, and so this is going to make sure that all of the files that start with that nomenclature are included. Within the individual test, I have this property, the status, that will give me the pass or fail. And then within the individual channel, we have a maximum and minimum. And I know that my limit, that I'm, what I'm searching for, is if this exceeds 50 degrees Celsius. So if I create this query, I can go ahead and search. And this, there are different levels we can search at. The first is the file level. So of those 30 files, three failed with this criteria. But I can also dive deeper into the individual groups. So within those three files, four of those different tests failed. And then within that, what are the specific channels that fail? And so this is the data that I am most interested in to start troubleshooting and understanding what's happening. So I'm going to clear what's in the data portal, select all of these different channels here, and drag and drop it into the data portal. Now, I don't know if you caught this, but what I just did was I loaded six individual channels from three different files into a single workspace so that I can analyze the data. Um, so that's pretty cool. 
So the next thing I want to do is view it. And so I have a graph. And because these are waveforms, meaning the timestamp data is already included, it was able to plot it automatically. And just like with any kind of um, interactive visualization, I can go ahead and create filters. <laughs> that one's a little weird, but I can create a band filter. I can zoom in. I can flag data. Um, I can do some really cool stuff with this powerful visualization editor. And then once some key insights are, um, I guess, identified, I can use this reporting infrastructure to create reports so that this can be sent through PowerPoint, uh, HTML, PDF. However you share information, we can export this and make sure that it gets sent to the right people to begin their investigation about why certain channels within the test is failing. Um, and the last thing you can do is leverage the scripting um, environment using either Python or Visual Basic to automate the repetitive post-processing uh, tasks that you want to do, including uh, searching for those outliers in your data and creating automated reports. So if you're interested in learning more about DDM, you can go to ni.com slash DDM and download a free trial. Or you can go to ni.com slash data plugins to see if we have a data plugin available for the file formats that you already use. And all of this is to help you on your journey to create accurate and actionable insights from your data.